conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f up. Big finish. Big finish against a decent opponent as well. Yeah, and she got, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 60,000, 75,000. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, um, as I said before, Shane Bays and JP Bays, that's her husband. Her husband's from South Africa. Uh, used to be a very good rugby player, if I'm not mistaken. Got into mixed martial No, very good wrestler. I think he was representing South Africa, maybe at the Olympics or something, but a high-level mm. wrestler. Uh, then they met each other. They fell in love, moved to Vegas, whatever. They're, they're training to be fighters. They're both being fighters. They both get signed to the UFC, as I said before. Unfortunately, it didn't go their way. On both of their debut, didn't go their way. But they've moved to Vegas. And this is, this is the st I mean, you know, like you're training now, but you're a comedian. You know, it's, it's not your life. You know, you mm -hmm. have a, um, you know, you, you have a career. You know, you are Louis, the great Louis J. Gomez, my mm -hmm. ad. You know, you know what I mean? But a lot of fighters, when they start, when they're doing it like that, when they're in the, when they're 20 years old or whatever, they don't do anything else. And it's all in. They're fighting. And both of these people, that, that is the road that they're on. That is the mission that they've decided to go on. They're together. They're in love. They're both doing the same thing. They moved to Las Vegas. And they're putting everything into it. And I remember when fucking hell, in the early days, I was flat broke. Rebecca was broke. We didn't have money. We didn't have a pot to piss in. We were borrowing money off everybody trying to make ends meet. And they're in the same position. You know what I mean? And they get signed to the UFC pretty early in their careers, but still they got signed. And um, it didn't go their way. But they'd borrowed money, apparently, to, to buy a house or to rent a house, should I say, in Las Vegas. You know, and it's tough. Coming up as a fighter is fucking hard. That's why when people say to me, um, what about Callum? And as I, we, we have fun with it, of course, but I don't think I want him to fight because it's such an unstable ride. It's a roller coaster and it's fucking hard. And it's re even harder to become successful at fighting. I'm not getting on my soapbox here for a minute, but apologies. But, but like people don't realize it's so fucking hard. And I go in, when I was active as a fighter, I would go in gyms all over the world. And the world class talent that I would see was incredible. I think, fuck me, this guy could make so much money. And he's sleeping in his car or sleeping on someone's couch. The road of a fighter is fucking hard. And the chance of making it is minute. Anyway, they both get signed to the UFC. They both fail, but she gets another shot. She wins. And then she gets. A fifty thousand dollar bonus as well, and I think Brian, I think you've got the footage here of when she actually found out, and it was beautiful. Check this out. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got a uh, performance of the night. Yeah! Whoa! Let's go! Woo! Let's go! Hey, sorry. Red shot. And then, and then there's another one that I sent through. I've heard the press conference talking about her financial situation. As I say. And as you cue that up, Brian, thank you. Uh, a lot of people are coming out of the woodwork and they're talking shit. This is ridiculous. Uh, fighters in the UFC shouldn't be going through these kind of financial difficulty. And again, I'm not coming here to fucking fight the battle for the UFC. She only just got with the UFC and she had one fight and she lost. She's not a career UFC fighter. Do you know what I mean? She had one fight, you get the chance and she lost. That doesn't, of course... You're not set for life. You're still going to be fucking struggling. Do you know what I mean? I don't understand all these assholes or these websites that come out and want to shit all over them. But still. Well, yeah, on. there. I mean, there seems to be. I do, I watch this happen in comedy all the time as well. Like, there's there seems to be just a thing where if you do it, there there. I, I guess it's like, well, no, you deserved a certain amount of money, and you know, just because the UFC, the the owners of the UFC make so much money, anybody who gets in. It's, it's a little different. Just getting in is one thing. Just doing comedy and getting on stage is one thing, but developing an act, developing an audience, developing a following, having people want to pay to watch you. These are all extremely valuable things, and that's, that's a very, very big part of it in any form of entertainment that you're in. Um, so I, I think that, I mean, look, I, I am of the... I'm sort of of the 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 thought process of keep it sexy, right? So maybe you know for for just like Cheyenne and like you know I, I'm not giving her advice at all, and I think it's sweet and I think it's great and I think it's incredible that she's being real. I would rather her be that, but I also do understand where if she wanted to, you know, act like oh it's not that big of a deal and sort of like go right back to it as well. Yeah, but 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 so, sorry to interrupt there. But at no, your please. age, at your age, and you and you're stable, you know, and you've got James, and you've got a place to live, and you've got a business, and you're a successful comedian, you've got a podcast network. It's very easy to say that when you're young and 
your childhood and your surroundings and your the way you were brought up has led this to be one of your only opportunities in life. And you probably come from an, an impoverished background and, and life was always fucking hard and you certainly weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth. And these people, some of their stories, some of their backstories are fucking terrible. Some of them aren't so bad. Some of them are great. Some of them come from very nice homes. Does it have to be? But generally, generally that is what you see. You know, so, so for them, you know, to get to a point where now, you know, she walked, probably walked, well, it was $50,000. She got 20000 for the fire. That's seventy, And uh, she would have had a bit of rebot money as well, maybe some other sponsors. So, you know, $80,000 last night. Most money she's ever seen in her life. I don't think there's anything wrong with showing your excitement for that. I remember when I was given my first bonus from Dana White and Lorenzo Fatita on top of the money that I earned. I think I got 12 and 12 coming off the ultimate fire. That's 24,000. I got a check for 50. It was 80, but the tax was paid. So I had 50. So that was 74. And I had some other money from sponsors. It was like $80,000. I remember it's on this documentary, Britain's ultimate fire sprinting up the fucking steps to see Rebecca. She was at the top of the stairs, sat by herself. No team I came out with me completely by myself. She flew out by herself. She's in the stands fucking in the nosebleeds, of course, because I'm a fucking no one back then. And I fucking, at eighty thousand dollars, and I remember sprinting up there and fucking, you know, look, look at this, look at this, because it's not just about the money; it's about the affirmation. It's because you go through through all all that sacrifice. You know what I mean? You put, all, I mean, you're going through it. You're training for Jason Ellis. You know what I mean? But imagine if this is like, you know, and I'm not downplaying what you're going through, by the way. But imagine if this was your life. This was your one call, and you're in the prime of your life, and you're not doing comedy. You're not doing anything else. This is fucking it. And you're not chasing any other dream. You're just putting everything into this, all the eggs in one basket. You know, it's a gamble. It's a big fucking gamble, but that's what these people do. You know, and then you've got someone with you, your wife, the mother of your children, and they're probably thinking to themselves in private, fucking, oh, I don't know about this. He lost his last couple, but fuck me. Uh, yeah, I, I would like it if he got a job, maybe a part-time job on the side. Do you know what I mean? And then you get that. It's the fucking confirmation that, hey, we're on the right path here. I told you we can do this. So that's why it means so much. All right, Mike, let's take a quick moment and thank Paleo Valley Snacks for supporting today's show. Paleo Valley Snacks makes incredible, high-quality beef jerky. And if you're on the go like myself or you, Mr. Bisping, you want a snack that's healthy and, and easy to carry with you, the Paleo Valley beef sticks are exactly that. 